Today we will talk about an element that has become synonymous with life. When you need something to survive, you need it like you need oxygen. I'm Sanjana Curtis and this is Stardust, a series where you and I will do a deep dive into the elements of the periodic table, where in the universe these elements were created, astrophysically speaking, and their role in our lives here on Earth. Today's element, oxygen, has eight protons in its atomic nucleus and three stable isotopes, oxygen 16, 17, and 18. About 21% of the Earth's atmosphere is made of oxygen. Combined with hydrogen, oxygen makes water, which covers the Earth's surface in vast and beautiful oceans. Through its presence in water, oxygen also makes up most of our bodies, about 65% by mass. And when we breathe, our lungs extract oxygen from the air we inhale and use it for important biological processes. For example, cellular respiration, where glucose is broken down to generate energy. Almost all the oxygen in the universe is produced by massive stars, stars that are more than 10 times the mass of our sun. Generally speaking, stars make oxygen by fusing carbon and helium together, although the different isotopes of oxygen do have different production channels. When massive stars explode at the end of their lives, they dump much of the oxygen that they produced during their life into the interstellar medium. So if most of you is oxygen, and the oxygen comes from massive stars, most of you is actually made of massive stars. We are so used to oxygen, we're so reliant on it, that it's strange to think about the fact that when the Earth first formed, there was almost no oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. All of the oxygen was locked up into, for example, water. The earliest single-celled organisms existed without oxygen, and then came the cyanobacteria. These creatures could do photosynthesis and produce oxygen, and eventually, about two and a half billion years ago, there was an event called the Great Oxidation Event, where the Earth's atmosphere began to contain significant amounts of oxygen. So the rise and fall of the oxygen levels in the Earth's atmosphere and the various creatures that contributed to or arose as a result are an interesting topic of study. And one of the coolest things in this area, in my opinion, is the early Permian period, when about 30% of the Earth's atmosphere was made of oxygen, so much, much higher than today. This allowed giant insects to roam the Earth. For example, a dragonfly-like insect, which had a wingspan of 28 inches. Now, oxygen has many important uses in all sorts of industries. For example, in steel making, in biomedical industries, rockets carry liquid oxygen so they can use it to burn their fuel. But what I want to do today is use oxygen to introduce you to a very fascinating question in the area of nuclear physics. The question is, how many neutrons and protons can you put together to make a nucleus that is stable, a nucleus that persists? So for example, if you have the nucleus of oxygen with its eight protons, how many neutrons can you add to this nucleus and still have something that is stable? Scientists at the Riken lab in Japan were just last year able to produce oxygen 28 so an oxygen nucleus with 20 neutrons. According to our best guess, oxygen 28 should have been stable, but it is not. It decayed. Why it decayed? I don't know, but this is important work that probes fundamental physics. This isn't just about oxygen, of course. We ask similar questions about other nuclei, including some of the heaviest nuclei in the universe, and it has to do with fundamental physics, the physics of elements, the physics of nuclei, the physics of the strong nuclear force which holds together neutrons and protons in atomic nuclei, how that force works. And so understanding this type of fundamental physics is key to understanding the origin of elements.